Hi guys, this is Bon Shankar. In previous session, I demonstrated about accounts payable and accounts receivable configurations. In this session, I will demonstrate about P2P, that is procure to pay. The entire P2P process I planned in three classes. Class 1 will be for theoretical background of P2P. In this class, you will understand what is P2P and the complete cycle of the P2P. Class 2, configuration part. In this class, I will show the configuration from logistic point of view. No need to worry for this logistic side configuration as you are an FICO consultant. But better to have the logistic side configuration knowledge also. In class 3, I will demonstrate the required configurations from finance point of view. Finally, I will create a PO, then GR, then record that invoice and on the due date, payment of that invoice. Now we will see what is P2P and what is P2P cycle and how accounts payable team plays a vital role in this process. What is P2P? P2P is the end-to-end -end process organizations use to acquire goods and services. It encompasses requisition, sourcing, purchase orders, receiving, invoicing and payment and helps ensure efficient procurement operations and policy compliance. What is accounts payable? The accounts payable AP is the amount of money that a business entity owes to vendors or suppliers for availing of their goods or services. It is the management of short-term payment obligations to the vendors or suppliers. Additionally, it is a part of the P2P process in SAP that covers all activities from procurement to invoice processing and vendor payment. Is P2P and accounts payable are same? The answer is no. P2P is a broader process which contains all the activities from creation of material requisition to payment to vendor. Whereas accounts payable have a smaller role but plays a significant part in P2P process which deals with the payment to vendors. What is P2P cycle? Marketing department will explore the market and they will bring the business for the company. They will approach different different customers and they will get business from the different different customers. And they will create sale order or customer order in the system. Production department always have their production strategies. They have two types of production strategies. One is MTO and MTS. MTO make to order, MTS make to stock. In MTO strategy, production department will produce the goods based on customer order execution schedule. Whereas in MTS, production department will produce goods based on some forecast. Here we can see the difference between MTO versus MTS. Make to order, production starts only after a customer order. Whereas make to stock production starts before a customer order based on forecasts. Make to order pull type model since production is pulled by consumer demand. Whereas push type method since products are being pushed to production based on anticipated sales. Exam anticipation of the rise of AC sales during summer. So based on their production strategies production department will prepare a production plan. After production plan they will finalize raw metal requirements as per their production plan. Based on the raw metal requirements production department will submit an indent or metal requisition or metal reservation to the stores department. The transaction code for metal reservation is MB21. Based on the indent or metal requisition or metal reservation from production, stores department will check the requested raw materials availability in the warehouse. If the requested raw materials are available in the warehouse, then immediately the stores department will issue to the production the requested raw material. If the requested raw material are not available in the warehouse, then stores department will submit a purchase requisition that is PR to the procurement department to procure the requested raw material. The transaction code for the purchase requisition PR is ME51N. Up to here, no accounting entry will be involved. Procurement department based on the purchase requisition from stores identifies different different vendors and they will float enquiries. Procurement department will send RFQs that is request for quotations to different different vendors. The transaction code for RFQ is ME41. All vendors whoever got RFQs from procurement department will submit their quotations to procurement team. So procurement team will get quotations from different different vendors. After getting quotations from different different vendors, procurement department will prepare a quotation comparison statement. Procurement department will evaluate quotation comparison statement both on technical as well as on commercial grounds. After evaluation of comparison statement, procurement department will select one vendor and they will issue purchase order to that vendor. The transaction code for the purchase order creation is ME21N. The vendor will acknowledge the purchase order and he will return acknowledged purchase order to the procurement department. The vendor before delivery of material will submit an ASN advance shipment note to the procurement department. Vendor will deliver materials along with the delivery note to the stores department. The storekeeper will unload the truck and physically count the material based on the purchase order and delivery note of the vendor. 
then storekeeper will prepare SRN stores receipt note based on the physical verification. Storekeeper will certify the delivery note by signing and signed delivery note will be returned to the vendor. Then vendor will submit an invoice to the accounts payable team. The storekeeper will submit his SRN along with the PO to the warehouse team for the preparation of GRN. The warehouse team will prepare GRN based on the storekeeper's purchase order, stores receipt note along with a copy of delivery note of the vendor. Here accounting entry starts. Transaction code for GRN is MIZO, MIGO. What is the entry? Inventory account data to GRIR account. What is the GRIR account? This is a clearing account. Goods receipt but not invoice receipt or invoice receipt but not goods receipt. For this purpose, we kept GRIR clearing account. Here we got inventory but we not received IR invoice. That's why inventory debited GRIR clearing credited. The warehouse team will submit the purchase order and GRN to the accounts payable team. So accounts payable team got invoice from the vendor and PO and GRN from the warehouse team. So before this invoice entering into the system, accounts payable team will conduct an invoice verification. Accounts payable team will conduct invoice verification maybe on a two-way matching approach or a three-way matching approach or a four-way matching approach. Once accounts payable department satisfies the invoice verification process, then they will record this approved invoice into the system. To record this approved invoice into the system, the transaction code is MIRO, M-I-R-O. Here, GRIR account will be debited and vendor account will be credited. In the first entry, GRIR account credited. Now, in this entry, GRIR account debited. So, GRIR account got nullified. The final entry will be inventory account data to vendor account. Upon the due date, this invoice has to be paid. So for vendor payment, vendor account data to bank account. This is another accounting entry, final accounting entry. For the payment to vendor, finally, the transaction code is F-53 if it is a manual payment, F-110 if it is automated payment. What is invoice verification in accounts payable? Upon receipt of invoice from the vendor, accounts payable team will conduct invoice verification before entering the invoice into the system or into the books of accounts. The invoice verification involves Maybe a two-way matching approach or a three-way matching approach or a four-way matching approach. What is this two-way or three-way or four-way matching and what are the documents required for this and how this verification will be carried out by the accounts payable team? We'll discuss now. End user job point of view. This is very, very important as this process will play a vital role in detection of errors and discrepancies, prevention of overpayments and in reducing fraud risks. Two-way matching. What are the documents required for two-way matching? Purchase order, vendor invoice. Now I will show one real-time example. This is purchase order of uh, one company in Qatar. Purchase order contains billing address, material delivery address, vendor address, information, document number. This is PO number, vendor number, buyer, material requisition number. It means MR number, in code terms, Xworks, date, currency, Qatar area, phone, VAT number, payment terms, payment in 60 days. CS reference, it means comparison statement reference and user creator, who created this PO, that is his name and project, for which project we are creating this purchase order. Now items, here only one item is there. If you have 10 items, 10 numbers will be there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now item 1, material description, what is this material? Supply of OPC cement, he is supplying OPC cement. Quantity, 100, unit, gross, 14.25 Qatar real per piece. It means per unit, 14.25 Qatar real. Total gross value, 1425 Qatar real. And others, scope of work, supply of cement, delivery terms, X factory, delivery. Metal will be collected as per site schedule. Period of delivery, immediate. Payment terms, 60 days credit from the date of invoice. Delivery address, contact person to whom vendor has to contact for delivery. Quotation number, this is vendor quotation number. Then total gross value, if you have given any discount, that discount. This is net amount, total amount net, 1425 Qatar real for this purchase order. Now instructions to vendor, if you want to give any specific instructions to vendor, you can give here. And signature of the authorized, who is authorizing this PO. And the date, this is purchase order. Now the second document is vendor invoice. So based on this purchase order, vendor supplied his uh, material and now he submitted his invoice to the accounts payable team. This is vendor invoice he submitted to accounts payable team. What it contains? Customer ID, customer name, PO box, telephone number, date, invoice number, project for which project, reference number, this is PO reference, payment terms, due date, customer ID, project, delivery note number, item, OPC cement, quantity 100, 
price 14.25 amount 14.25 Less discount if any, no discount, total due 14.25. He submitted this invoice to the accounts payable team. So two way matching, material is uh, OPC cement. What are the required documents? Purchase order, vendor invoice. Here purchase order, this is purchase order number and this is vendor invoice number. Quantity 100, unit currency Katraria, price 14.25, value, total value of the purchase order 14.25. Invoice submitted by vendor for the same value. This is vendor invoice and same quantity and same price, same value, same currency, same unit. Like this way, accounts payable team will check in two-way matching system. In this case, there is no discrepancy. The submitted vendor invoice exactly matched with the purchase order. So accounts payable team will record this invoice into the system or books of accounts. For example, vendor submitted his invoice for 1525 instead of 1425. The accounts payable team will found this discrepancy with the help of two-way matching verification and they will instruct the vendor to revise and resubmit the invoice for 1425. In this way, accounts payable team will control the excess payments to vendors with the help of two-way matching. Now we see the advantage of two-way matching verification. At the same time, we have risk also with this two-way matching verification. What is the risk? May not detect discrepancies in quality and quantity. Quality point of view, if the delivered material is defective as there is a no quality inspection test, we can't use that raw material in the production process. If we use that defective raw material in the production process, the output of the finished product will affect very badly. So we can't sell that product in the market resulting waste of our invested money. Quantity point of view, if vendor delivered less quantity than the purchase order quantity or the invoiced quantity, we don't have delivery check results over payments to the vendor. For example, vendor submitted his invoice for 1425 Katri Riyal, but he delivered only 60 bags instead of 100 bags. Actually, vendor is supposed to submit his invoice for 855 Katri Riyal, but he submitted invoice for 1425 Katri Riyal. What is the gap? 1425 minus 855. So 570 Katri Riyal you are going to pay excess. So, Two-way matching verification missing this quantity control. So two-way matching contains uh, risk in terms of uh, quantity as well as quality. If vendor supplies uh, less quantity than invoiced quantity results uh, over payments to the vendor, it means wasting of our money or working capital. Same way, if vendor supplies uh, defective raw material, we can't choose that raw material in the production process results waste of our money or working capital. Three-way matching. Documents required for three-way matching. Purchase order. Vendor invoice, GRN, goods receipt note. Vendor will deliver material to the stores along with the delivery note. Delivery note contains the item, unit and the quantity delivered to the store. Then vendor submits his invoice to the accounts payable team. The storekeeper after unloading from the truck will count physically and certifies the delivery note by signing and will return to the vendor. Storekeeper will prepare a store's receipt note, SRN, after his verification. Warehouse team will prepare GRN based on the storekeeper's store's receipt note along with a copy of the vendor's delivery note. The warehouse team will submit the GRN along with purchase order to the accounts payable team. Here we have the three documents now. Purchase order, GRN and invoice. This GRN is prepared by warehouse team based on the delivery note of the supplier as well as store's receipt note of the storekeeper. GRN contains, this is GRN number and this is document date, current date and this is plant description Vendor, this is vendor number and vendor name, purchase order number, purchase group, then telephone numbers, then item. We have one item, item 1, description of the material, supply of OPC cement, 100 units, unit price 14.25, GRN value 14.25. Three-way matching by the accounts payable team. Now we have three required documents, purchase order, GRN, vendor invoice. Here we have all details, this is purchase order number, this is GRN number and vendor invoice number. Quantity, unit, currency, price, value. In this case, all are same. Quantity 100, 100, 100. Price also 14.25, 14.25, 14.25. Value also same. 1425, 1425, 1425. In this case, there is no discrepancy. We can record this invoice into the system or into the books of accounts. For example, if vendor submitted his invoice for 1500 or vendor submits his invoice for 1300. Straight away, accounts payable team will reject this invoice and will send back to the vendor for resubmission. In another case, purchase order 1425 and vendor submitted his invoice for 1425. But in practical, vendor delivered only 60 quantity and the GRN prepared for 855. Here we have quantity control through GRN, but vendor submitted his invoice for 1425. So, accounts payable team will straightly reject this invoice and will send back to the vendor for resubmission. 
with the corrected value. So we have a quantity control here in three-way matching. But still we have a risk with the three-way matching. What is the risk? May not verify the quality of the products. As there is a no inspection slip, we are not very sure about the quality of the material. Again, if the material is defective, we can't sell that our finished product in the market, resulting loss of our working capital. So with this three-way matching also, we have still one risk. Four-way matching. Documents required for four-way matching. Purchase order, vendor invoice, GR and goods receipt note, quality inspection slip. Four-way matching by accounts payable team. Here we have all purchase order, GR and vendor invoice, quality slip. Here everything fine. The purchase order is here. Vendor submitted his invoice for the same value. As per GRN quantity control we have, we received 100 quantity invoice value matched with our GRN quantity. Now the quality risk also finished because we have quality slip. The quality also assured. Now no problem with quality. So we have quantity control as well as quality control. Risk, no risk. In this way, four-way matching will work. It ensures both quantity as well as quality. From this picture we can observe we have different different ways for invoice verification by accounts payable team. Two-way matching verification. 3-way matching verification, 4-way matching verification. What are the documents required for 2-way matching? Purchase order and vendor invoice. Here what is the risk? May not detect discrepancies in quality and quantity. For 3-way matching, what are the documents required? Purchase order, GRN, vendor invoice. What is the risk associated here? May not verify the quality of the product. 4-way matching, what are the documents required for this? Purchase order, GRN, vendor invoice and inspection slip. Risk, no risk as both parts cover here quantity part as well as quality part. So this is about the theoretical part of P2P. In upcoming sessions, I will show the configuration part. I will show configuration from the very beginning of logistic activity that is uh, from creation of plant, creation of storage location, creation of purchase organization, purchase groups, material groups, so on and ends with payment to vendors. If you find interest in this video, subscribe to my channel and also like and share to this. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.